Hi guys, welcome. It's Lisa from Artist Palette. Hello, hello. Okay. This is sometimes I reuse my palette, so I have my primary colors here. If you're here's the supply list: um, primary yellow or bright yellow, phthalo blue or primary blue is good. Bright red or primary red. So bright red is the non-orange kind, but in this one, um, the non-orange, if you have an orange red, it's fine because basically it's fall, it has a lot of red orangey colors, should be good. Then we have white and black. Black down here, white up here. If you have a mixing palette that you can use a piece of cardboard or another paper plate or something, um, you can use that. And then for my brushes, you can use a large just to get some of the base coats going, like in the background, kind of gives it a nice rainy look with the blue. And then we have a medium flat kind of frayed. Frayed brushes are fine for the texture of the leaves. You just kind of dab with the tip of the brush and you get the exact texture here. And a couple detailed brushes. So number two, and number zero, so any of these is fine for when we work on the lamp, the person with the umbrella. So those are the detailed brushes. Okay, so hopefully we have our stuff and we have a paper towel here on the side to dry it off sometimes and a water cup and then any canvas, you know, an eight by 10, is what I have here. You can use something bigger. Up to you. I'm gonna show you how to mix all the colors. So don't worry, it's gonna be pretty easy going. And welcome. Hi, Vicky, nice to see you in the chat again. So let's get started. You can pause, fast forward. If it's live, you can't fast forward, but fast forward, pause, take your time, whatever you need to do. So I dipped my large brush in the water. And I just dabbed it a bit dry. Then for the background, we just have to do a lot of light blue. You can see it's very light and then it goes just a little bit more, um, kind of looks a bit darker with some more like blue trees in the background, kind of rainy and faded. And then like a watery uh, walkway here from the rain. So all I'm going to do is pull some blue to the side just a little bit. Take a big scoop of white. See, it gets very light blue. You can even just take mostly white on your brush for the very edge of the painting here. See, I'm just using the flat side up and down like that. The streaks are nice because it gives it more of a rainy look. Another way to make it look a bit more rainy is just a little bit extra water. And if you want to get more streaks, mix your color only halfway. Then you get a lot of streaks. Yeah, just take, this is just some more white on my brush. If you feel like you're picking up too much blue. So I'm going more than halfway down right now because it's more blue down here, but we're going to cut it this way. You just want to go more than halfway to be safe. So you don't have white gaps in between. When you do your walkway, you wanna make sure your sky in the background is coming down. So more water, this is more watery. See the more watery look? It helps with the same look, right? You can just drip a lot of water down and let the blue fall. Just kind of dab the water, lift it up and let it drip down. That's another fun way, but I'm just sticking with something Pretty simple here. There we go. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna cut it across this way. So just use the same color, the light blue. So I'm going more than, I'm going a bit more than halfway up. So my, what I like to do here is a bit, so about a little bit more than halfway up. And I'm just going to, hold on one second.
Okay, so that was my son just, <laughs> I guess, wanting to chat. So light blue. So see how I went down on an angle a little bit, like in this one, just a little bit, nothing too crazy. And I'm just doing all of my lines true, which means just kind of straight across level with my canvas. So it looks like the pathway is on an angle. You can see it from a different angle instead of just straight across. See, they're all just straight like this. So it starts off shorter because you run out of space and you just keep going until you're just level. You, you, you stay level with your canvas until you just get down here. You just go end to end basically. And a little bit more side to side. We'll add more stuff to this very shortly. Okay, so you can let that dry for a minute, but we just go back into the top and we add in some very vague abstract trees. And I use for that one, you can use the same large brush. If you have a flat one, you can use the same one. You can use something smaller. This one's more frayed, so I'll probably use my thin large one still. I'm okay with that. So the color that I mix for this is I just add a bit more blue into my light blue. See? Just a little bit more. Nothing, not like a whole ton amount. We just want more of a sky blue. And you can always go darker, especially if it's still very wet. You can go a little bit darker because it just gets a little bit lighter when you put it on top of wet paint that's still light. Um, so just to start, let's start on the very left side. I'm just going to press and kind of go upwards. And trees, they're never perfect. They're not like, you know, all the same height or all the same thickness and standing very straight. Some of them, you know, you can put a little like branch coming out on some of them. Overlap is good. And then as I get towards this side, I just lightly press to mimic further away. And you can always make the bottoms a little bit wider, see, for more of the trunk of the tree. All right, so if you washed off your brush, that's fine. You can also add in some of the dabs in the background for a leafy look. So you just take the same color, which you can use your medium brush for. So you just start dabbing all over, but not at the very, very bottom. I just leave a little gap from the bottom up so it looks like there's mostly leaves towards the top. Just dab with the tip of the brush, let it be spongy. So I'm just lightly tapping. I'm not trying to smush the whole brush into my painting. Light with the tip. Lots of overlap as well. And very random. You can go a bit more heavy on the very left side where you get more of a clear view over here, whereas it's more faded, kind of misty looking over there. There. So we'll be using that same blue right after And we're going to go to the bottom here. I like to quickly outline where some of those foliage is, some of the leaves that have fallen from the trees around. 
so that you know where the pathway is and where more of the leaves in the forest area is. So you can, you can actually just grab almost straight blue, nothing else, but I would take the same blue and you can go darker. So we know that's kind of cutting off this little area over here. That doesn't mean you need to just make a whole outline here. You can just start, I like to just use the thin side. Now, again, this is my large brush. It has a thin side. If you have a smaller brush with a thin side, you can use that too, you know, something like this. Nothing, nothing um, too frayed, right? You want it to keep it more thin. So see how back here, there's just these little streaks. They're all level with the canvas. And I keep saying that a lot because it's kind of important to keep the, the ground look like it's all level and not like wonky. So from here, just on the side, see how it's like creating a bit more of a pathway? It has a cool look because I'm not angling my brush. It's all, if I were to place it, it's like level with this canvas. It's all straight, flicking it across, lots of overlap. Marking down where this area is. I'm just going to press a little bit harder here. I'm just going to flick it outwards so it looks like it's faded. Now, the trick, if you waited for this to fully dry and you want to blend it out, the key there is to take your white. You just take white on your brush. You can wash off your brush and take white, by the way. And go along the ends and pull it out further. See, and now you have faded blue but lots of streaks going across. So I'm just gonna add some more streaks of the blue just on the sides here, and especially um, some at the bottom. Here's straight blue, I'm gonna add some on the bottom. You can have fun with this. You don't need to place it exactly where I'm placing it. it kinda looks icy right now. There's some blue over here. Lots of streaks. It's going to help with the watery look. And I just wash off this brush. Nice to see that people from Australia is joining. Just dab this dry. Okay, and just wait a little minute. Good for it to mostly dry. Um, uh, because we have yellows and we have oranges and reds, yellow on top of blue, as we know, makes a bunch of green. So if this is fully dry, then you can do a lot more things with it, especially with um, putting the orange on top and avoiding making green. So if you have a blow dryer, you can blow dry it. You can do something quick, come back to it. It's pretty easy going. Okay, so I'm gonna wave this around for a minute and then I'll get started again. It's almost dry. it's not too bad so far it's pretty easy straightforward no stress it's mostly about having a relaxing fun time and acrylic is very forgiving Okay, it's still waving around. So my next step would be start putting in some background leaves, that orange in the background on top of the blue. So that's where we want it to mostly dry. 
and put in a base coat here. So the, the light yellowy orange. It's okay if it's a bit brownish because, you know, fall has brown colors. They're not all super vibrant. They just look vibrant because they do have that tinge of yellow and orange is showing through. And then we'll start putting a little bit of these leaves back here. All right, now I'm gonna start using this frayed medium brush. See how it's kind of got like this wide tip at the end of it. It's hard to kind of tell, but it does. Okay, let's mix a little bit of an orange. You have a pre-mixed orange? Great. Maybe add a little bit of white to it. I'm going to pull yellow and just a little bit of red. So when I say a little bit of red, I mean like a dot or two, big scoop of yellow. So it be, it's very like um, yellowy orange, very soft, kind of golden, not getting too dark at first. And then I'm going to take a pea size of white a very golden yellowy looking color, very soft. It actually looks just like the one down here. You can also use it up here. Let's just start with this one and see how it is. Um, many ways you can do this. You can just kind of dab with the tip of it. The more you go over this, if it's wet, the more it's just gonna turn green. So the key is to wait for it to dry and then do your second coat if needed. So see how I just lightly tapped just want little dots back here like it's disappearing and then i'm going to build onto it get a little bit more over here like because it's closer to us a little bit more going on so less over here light little touches and then gradually you can have a little bit more. You can use the more corner tip right here on like the vertices of it. Get up a little bit higher over here. There. That's a nice color. Let's use the same color. If you have to mix more, don't worry. It's not going to be exactly the same. They don't have to be. In fact, you probably don't want it all to be exactly the same. But roughly the same color. We're going to get a base coat here. And all I do dab right up to my blue because we're going to give it more of an outline with some black or some dark blue in a little bit give it a bit more of a shape okay, just using all angles of the brush you can overlap your blue that's kind of probably a good thing because you don't see all these weird gaps in between you know it's going up on an angle here it's kind of covering this opening a little bit I'm just going to dab to fill it in using the width of the brush to get a lot of coverage. And this is our first coat. It's okay if you leave some blue showing, by the way. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I'm just going right up to the blue. And when you feel like you are making a bunch of green, just wash off your brush, do another part, come back to it. I'm just going to come out a little bit more here. There, before it starts getting really green. Put a little bit more coming out this way. That's about it. Wash this off. And you know what? Green, I welcome it. Why? Because there's green in nature. There's still little bits of green showing in the leaves. Probably more authentic that way. Nice color. Let's add some leaves up here. If you wanna change the color a little bit, I mean, it's nice to change the color. Let's take some more yellow this time. Dot more red, no more white. White gives it a peachy cream color. This gives it a more sharper, um, vibrant kind of orange. Still, I don't need it too dark. 
Let's see how it is. It was kind of around the area. You can add a touch of white if you want it still to be a little bit lighter, softer looking. A little bit more white in here, just for fun. And I didn't go as much with the blue as I did with the blue. Um, kind of don't want to overdo it there. But you can add more blue. So if you're thinking, okay, I want more blue, there's not enough blue. Well, great. Just be very careful that you don't just cover all your orange and make too much green. You can just add a little bit more in between if that's something you need to do. There. A little bit more on the left side. Okay. Now, if you're, if you're wanting to do this, you can add just a little bit of white to hide anything. You know, you can open up this pathway so it looks like it's a bit more obvious. Just be careful with touching other colors. It's almost like the lights over here shining a little bit more on this side. You can also add streaks of white to give it more of a watery look. This helps boost it a little bit. It reflects a bit more, picks up more highlights. And that's just with pure white. So I would just take white, do some short little streaks around the some of the open area, breaking up some of the blue. Just adding a little bit more leaves here. Yeah, I'm just going to wait for that to dry, then I can do a second coat. And it can be more opaque looking and not as, if you're avoiding green, not as green. And yeah, not as transparent either. Okay, so my next step would be to add a little bit of this dark red just on the side. So a little bit of dark red, streaks them into your little watery um, pathway here. Gives it more of a reflecting look. And then after that, we can start placing in some of our trees. Give it a little bit of an outline just before that. So with the black around, but I'm gonna use a dark blue or you can use something else. So this is going to be red with the tiniest dot of black. The thing is, if you take this nice scoop of red and a tiny dot of black, it turns into a deep red instead of just your plain red, which is um, kind of pinkish sometimes, or if it's orangey, then that's okay. But you can also add a touch of orange or yellow into it to stop it from looking too pinky purple. You'll probably see what I mean when you when you start painting with it and realizing that red um, can look a bit pinkish if it's not the orange red. Okay, let's test this out. Maybe I just a dot more of my black. So I want a nice deep red. Maybe just a little bit here. It's on top of my wet paint, so I'm okay with this. I'm just going to lightly Tap a little bit upwards towards the side. I can always add more later, you know, less is more. Don't need to be too intrusive with the color since I already have a lot of this over here. So with the 
dark red, red with a little dot or two of black. You can add a little touch of yellow, like a dot or two of yellow. You can add a little bit of this reflecting. So just very lightly with maybe your detailed brush if you're not comfortable with this one. You just want to kind of squiggle it around. Just lightly press here with the tip of the brush. Since we have a person with an umbrella standing right around here, I can start reflecting it already if I already know where it's going to be. Now the squiggly thing is it's like it's very snake-like, you know, it's just like very following it down, very rounded, ovally type shapes. Give it some movement because water, it's very moves. It's got a lot of reflecting and it's not like a, per it's not very still. So it kind of moves around a little bit. So that will be for the umbrella person. Okay, so in just a minute, we're going to give it a little bit more outline with some black here. You can also do a second coat before that with your yellow and white and a dot of red or two dots of red. I'm just washing off the brush. I'm gonna wait a minute before I do that. Then we'll start some of the black. It's good to just let things um, dry for a minute. Hold on, sorry. This is, okay, there we go. Uh, let's see, oh, so if we're waiting for it to dry, one thing we can do is take our detailed brush and start the lamp post, give us something to do before we do a second coat with some of the yellow, if there's any green you wanna cover. If you like the green, just leave it. I'm going to take a little dunk in the water with this. Take some black. And I like to twirl my brush in here. So it's twirling it. See how it's, I'm just spinning it so that it picks it up. And it stays nice and pointy on the end. Like well, you have a nice pointed pencil that you can just draw with. Okay. So this lamppost, not too far this way, it's kind of, you know, like a, if it's an eight by 10, maybe like a half inch in or a full inch. If you have a much bigger canvas, I would go a little bit more so that you're not too close to the edge. You want to keep it within the frame reasonably. Maybe a ruler. So I have to turn it this way so I can make sure it is straight and I want it to end somewhere around here. So I'm just going to go up. And I want, so I'm not going to go as tall as I really want to go. You can, but I'm going to leave a little space for where the lantern's going to sit. I can always make this thicker later. What the hey, let's just make it thicker now. I'm already doing it. All right, so touch of water, more black paint. You just need to keep doing that because it runs out of paint and moisture really quickly. So just at, this is funny, there's an orange dab right where my light's gonna be, so this is great. I'm just gonna put, and that wasn't on purpose, don't worry. You can just add it in. Um, I'm gonna put a short little horizontal line. Let's go much closer. See a short little horizontal line at the top here. Very short, not not too obvious because you don't want it to stick out too much. This is like the base of where the lantern is going to sit. Okay, so I, you can see what I'm talking about with this already. There's a light in here and I didn't, it's just part of a leaf, but I'm gonna turn it into a light. I'm going to now make, um, two lines just kind of going outwards, more perpendicular to it. So it's just a little bit 
out this way. Now, trying to copy it on the other side, I know, right? It's like trying to match your eyeliner all the time if you put on eyeliner. Anyways, out a little bit over here. Then we're going to cap it. Just go straight across. Just go out a tiny bit, then a little bit more than where it um it ends to give it a flare. I'm going to switch to my even smaller brush now. This was a size two, which for an eight by ten can be a little bit large if you're trying to make details. So the little flare I'm talking about, I'm going to put a little pointy line kind of sticking out and up. Then we're going to, with the cap, little hat thing. So it has a, make sure there's a line going across. It's just, it's like you're making the Tin Man hat. Nice little rounded triangle. And then it should, if you go follow this up, it should be even and equal. Just a little short line at the top. I'm just going to fill that in. add some highlights to it just to give it a bit more shape before I put the black line in the middle wash this off and I'm going to take yellow and white so any amount of yellow and white I mean if the more yellow you make it the more of a glow the more white see how it's mostly white and a little bit of yellow I'm going to put some little blob in here. I have to come back and put the line in so that it's not, you know, it's not really clashing with the black and just making a mess. Okay. So I'll come back to that and put the line back in the middle. Not really back in, but just continue it up when this is more dry. But with... Um, the clean brush and if you take white here while it's still wet it just comes off as a light gray so you just want to very lightly go across some parts so like the edge at the bottom of the cap there it's just more of a gray color now you can just put like a little design here and anything you don't like so if i just take black again there, you can just get rid of some of the details. I'm going to take white. I liked that little line up here. Don't take too much white on your brush. Just take a small amount. And you can just highlight more on the side, facing towards more of the light. That could be a nice thing. And a little bit on that bottom part of the right below. You're just outlining and highlighting certain certain parts of the lamppost and the lantern. All the way down, you can do stuff like, you know, little white lines going across. You can just leave it all black. You can make this bottom part a little bit wider. Anyways. I'm just going back to my number two brush, a little bit of water and some black. But I will take um, a bunch of blue with it. So it actually just looks black. It's just blue black you know see how dark that is super dark it's basically black 
and you can, if you're happy with doing streaks, you can just kind of go along the very bottom of your red. See, water, paint. Just make it a bit more grounded looking. Give it a bit more shadow. Short little lines. Just follow it up. It just gives it a more of a grounded look, a bit more shadow. And then, of course, the reflecting from the lamppost around it. Here's what I like to do. See how it's nice and squiggly? So a little bit of water and your blue-black or just black. I'm going to turn it really quick because <laughs> I don't want it to be going sideways. Little squiggles. Yeah, definitely moving around. And you can add a little bit more around this area. Some more streaks if you want to, right? And even if it has a little gap, that's good. That's actually nice. So I'm going to continue with my blue and black with a touch of water. Take that. You can twirl your brush as you pick up the paint. And um, just around, you can give it little outlines. This I kind of recommend after you do your second coat of the orangey yellow, but it's okay if you want to do it first. So I'm basically outlining, just kind of dabbing up to it. So it gives it a bit more shadow, a bit more of a lift. And you can pull out this black, black blue a little bit more, mostly on this side, not too thick up on this top part. It looks like there's a kind of, um, you can't really see it on this side because you can't really see the other side too well where this is kind of looking, but you can see it more this way. So just down here. Level and straight with your canvas lines, keep it consistent. Water and black. Okay, and down here, just kind of lightly tap and dab right up to your yellowy orange. And it's up to you how much of this you wanted to put in. You can go generous, you can go more conservative and add more later. Okay, what do we think so far? Pretty easy going? A lot easier than you anticipated? Good. Hopefully that's that's the case. Okay, wash that off. Let's start, actually let's just do one little coat second coat of this yellowy golden just here it kind of gets rid of some extra green if you don't want too much green a little bit is totally fine it's probably a good thing all right Wash this off. Let's add in some of that dark red color, dark reddish orange. And that will be 
basically the color we're going to put on our trees that are on the side. So we'll put that in. To make that color, let's pull yellow, nice chunk of yellow, and then a little bit less of the red. So I would say almost equal parts. And this is a lovely color, just of more of a kind of a blood orange or darker orange. You can see how it's looking. So I'll just show you a little bit. This is optional, right? If you just want to do, oh, I like this orange. I want to put this orange a little bit here and there. Great. Go for it. Okay, so that's an option to put in some orange here. You can also just do more of a reddish, so another scoop of red, dot of kind of black, only a small dot, and it gives it that kind of more earthy, reddish, dark red, orange fall color. You just, if you add a dot of black, it tones it down so it looks more realistic and you don't have this super bright red. I like to tap with the tip of the brush. And just put that wherever. So overlap is key. I would say don't do polka dots. All right. Now it's hard to go back to orange, especially when you just did red, but you can do light yellowy orange to tap it back in. I would wait for it to mostly dry before you try to change it just in case you want to do that because it just can start making a bit of a mess. See how I'm just merging it together. It can become more of a mess, but you know, it's all interpretation, all your preference. If you like things different and you know how it was before try not to overwork it but if you like it more like metal together then you can dab a little bit extra on top and kind of blend it more together but i like this it's like the different colors and very textured and you can always add a little bit more on top when it's more dry to the color that you want. If you're trying to achieve a color that's not working, it has to dry first. I know it can be frustrating, but just trust the process. All right. Let's start our big trees. And what we'll do is after we do our big trees, we will place the person with the umbrella so that we can put the leaves around so that you're not, I guess, invading the space too much. Also, you could just skip ahead and do the person first with the umbrella and then do the trees placed how you want it. Alrighty. I am going to use, let's see, a flat brush or a detailed brush is fine, like a number two. I'm going to use this thin flat one, nothing frayed right now. I'm just going to take black touch of water and don't force a big brush. This one just happens to have a thin edge. So whatever has a thin edge, or you can use a detailed brush or something rounded with a pointy tip. So with this black, I want to place this, as you can see, there's two trees right in the middle here. So around this middle section, not too far down, not too far up, about the middle of this little pile of leaves forest area. And we're just going to go pretty much to the top. So I'm just going to place it, go to the top. Okay, a touch of water. And I'm just going to make it thicker. So at the bottom, I'm just going to press a little bit harder. And you probably just want to leave the top mostly alone. But you can branch out a little bit, not too wide. 
We're just going to go more. See how it's starting to part above this, um, or the horizon, I guess, in a way is. Just go above that. And then I just need to touch more water with my paint very lightly. Just kind of sticks out. Okay, so over here, I'm going to use my detailed brush now. I don't want to accidentally go way too thick. Just right here, lightly press. And you don't really see where it's going. So that's the great thing. So nobody knows where it's going. We just have an idea. Then we have another tree. So off to the side. I'm just going to do another tree. Yeah, it's probably coming more this way. It's okay. They're not all straight. It's nice this way. And then you can have a bit of a branch coming up off to the side a little bit more. So not too bad, right? Pretty easy going, straightforward. Yes. You can take some sort of orangey red color or just orange, lightly tap around the bottom. There you go, you got a bit of a shadow and some leaves covering it, perfect. That's just what we wanted. Nothing too crazy, it does a little bit of everything. You just touch the bit of that black, dab around it just a little bit got a bit of a shadow and it's buried. It's not like the trees are floating around. It looks like it's grounded. Okay, so this next part is pretty key. The black mostly has to dry. If you can get it all the way dry, great. But that way um, you can put the color of your leaves on top without it mucking it all up. And now I will put the black through here and I will start working on the person with the umbrella. When that's done, this should be ready to go with like the, the same color. So like any reds, any oranges, any light yellowy golden colors, or, you know, add some green too. I'm just gonna take a little bit of black. And I'm just going to very carefully go straight up. It is still wet. There we go. Okay. So I'm using my super detailed brush again. Let's go nice and close for our person in the distance. They're not too much in the distance either. <laughs> just a little bit. Okay. People can be difficult, but as long as you just get the shapes right, you know, you get some portions pretty good. It's all silhouette, so you don't have to worry about anything else. You can highlight as much as you like to add more detail. I'm just going to take black, touch of water. Black and water, black and water. That's all we're really taking. So here's what we want to do. Um, when we're placing our person and umbrella, we just want to imagine, okay, the umbrella is up here. So if we're looking at, you know, where we want it to be, the umbrella is up here, not down here, because you put it down here, you have a person that's going to come down here instead. So if you want them walking right here, they kind of look like they're a bit further away, of course, and you don't have to worry about too much detail. So just going around the bend is where we want it to go. Um, for me, you can just start with, you know, not touching this area, just a little bit higher up. So we're just going to go a little higher up. 
I'm just gonna start with more of a line. See how it's going and the, the body goes a little bit into these yellow leaves here. Yeah, that's what we wanna do. So this is what we're working with before it goes into umbrella. You don't see the head because it's under the umbrella. Thank goodness for that, right? All right. You know, shape of the body can vary. Um, if you want to do more of a feminine look, it's quite easy to do just by little, little tiny things, right? You can do different things. This is like a, a trench coat in a way, so it could be anybody. I'm just going to copy it. I'm just going to copy it. If you want to do something more gender neutral, it could fit anybody. So we're just going to go out a little bit for when you're holding your brother, usually you're holding it up and your arms are kind of sticking out a little bit. We have just a little bit of a side triangle. It's just going to follow down. It's going outside that line a little bit. And now it's going to start flicking. See how it's, these are the legs. It's quite long. So you only see more of the shins. I'm going to flick it more down on an angle this way. More towards the left. See, you're just making more of a long kind of coat. Um, in upper body, you want it to be a little bit wider, showing the other side of the arm. So I'm just going on the other side. Imagine there's a head right here. So I just put it very faintly. All right. So we're going to follow this down. So we have the arms holding it up. So you don't see them dragging and drooping down. And it's just going to follow it out. Now, once you have something like that, if it looks kind of believable to you, just leave it. You don't need to adjust things. Um, of course, you want the legs to look like, you know, you have two of them. And what I did is I kind of swiggled around the bottom for that shadowy reflection. And just like this is the body squiggling around meeting with some of the red. So one thing as well, you don't, from your little arms holding it up, you don't want it to go stick thin. You want, because the upper body still stays a little bit wider. And it's up to you how much of a shapely figure you want to give this person. I kept mine more simple. So these little nubs on the side, that's, hold, that's going to be holding up the umbrella. So I wash this off. Take my number two brush, so the bigger detailed brush. I don't need it super thin now. I'm going to hide the head. I'm going to take red and a touch of white and some yellow before I put dark red. Dark red might not show too well on top of your blue. So I'm going to do red, a little bit of yellow, yellow and white. Yep. Let's do that. So it's going to not be the color that I want at first. Not that it's a bad color, it's just, I want it dark red. So we have a nice big umbrella. You can make it one of those ginormous ones. You go like those inverted loops here, right up to where the neck shoulder area is. And then again, it goes out and then it goes out, but slightly upwards. And then we're just going to take that, we're going to follow it up and connect it. 
kind of like a happy little rainbow. Base fill for when I take my dark red. Maybe you like this color and you want it to be this color. Sure. So some of us might be wondering where is, how does it look like he's walking or she's walking? If, um, you know, the foot, there's like a little line you can put, like there's a foot in front about to step forward, or you can put a foot behind the, if you go and imagine the foot's behind, that's harder to do. You can do it more like this and get away with it because this is the behind light, the one that's coming straight down. And there's one in front, like a little line just up above. You can add for the foot going in front. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of black and just put that little um, line sticking up. Sometimes they have those lines sticking up, right? You can just start outlining just a little bit around this umbrella. So what's fun is you can add these little streaks, kind of sort of connecting it up. Just gives it a little bit more shape, right? From just putting these in, gives it a bit more shape. Looks more dented instead of like this perfect umbrella with no dents. Kind of like that color. <laughs> I'm actually going to keep it. That's great color. So there we go. That's the color I'm sticking with. If you want to make it more um, like the one in the picture, it's just that red and the black. See, same color. This color and this color, same color red and a dot or two of black you can add a dot of yellow as well to it and you can even add in a little highlight you know how like the rain would be touching it a little bit of white you can add some streaks of highlight just at the top give it more of a rainy look or just like white little dots to give it more of a splashy sort of look. Maybe I'll put one just at the bottom here. It's kind of nice to do. and just know when to stop playing with it. So again, these little indents that I made, right on top I took red and some black and I just did a little outline kind of around some of the edges here, but from the center, top center point where that little line sticking up, I just like curved it down in between the points, the little vertices we have here, the little points sticking down. I just kind of put it in between in the middle and it gives it more of a crease look. And trust me, when you step back, it, it does. It works a little bit nicer up close. You see a lot of random lines, but it works. And you can take you know, some white, just a small amount of white on your brush to highlight more of the right side of this person. For example, you know, just the shape of their body to give it more of a 3D look. Okay, let's pull this back. There we go, and it comes together quite nicely. I 
red and a touch of black. See, now that you can see where the umbrella is reflecting, you can add in more. Anything you need to add. So basically from here, I just have to add the leaves on my tree, trees, both of them. Yeah, pretty much dry. There might be some damp spots with the black, but I'm okay with it because I don't mind a slight tinge of brown. It gives it more of a realistic look, I think. So my frayed brush. In terms of color, anything you wanna use or start with, you just take red and a big scoop of yellow. So a big scoop of yellow, a little bit of red or equal parts. You get a red orange, maybe a touch of white, small touch of white and a small touch of black, too much black. It actually turns very brown. Maybe just a little bit to give it on the verge of maybe turning brown, but it's not quite. Let's see how this looks. It's too salmon. You don't just forget um, this color. You can just go with no white added and it won't turn too salmon looking. Let's just start going. So I'm going to very lightly tap around. I'm not gonna go all the way down here. I'm gonna leave a nice gap for the background. See, I'm just going to drag it out just a little bit. It really depends on the style you're going for. So what you can do is just layer it a little bit. So you have some leaves kind of drooping down here. And just a little bit. It's almost like there's less and less as you go up. Three little layers. And then mostly filled at the top, leave some gaps. Let some of the blue show, that's okay. You can extend them as much as you like as you keep filling it in more and more. So that's a nice reddish, you know, very red, deep red fall kind of leaves. And then you can highlight. So if I wash this off, I can highlight it with more of my golden color. I'm just going to paint more. There's a little bit more black on the side. And you can also pop your, some of your branches back out if you want to. Kind of cool. Just some ideas. Nothing that happened in the original, just some extra things to do. Okay, so I'm gonna take my white, big scoop of yellow, dot of red. You can add some golden color. And since we're almost done here, if you are done and you want to show off your results, we love seeing them. We love seeing different interpretations and styles. So you can go on our Facebook page. There's a group. It's the um, Artist Palette Support Group for acrylic and drawing and stuff because we teach drawing a lot too. We post there. We also post more of our free tutorials in that group and um, you can check out more events like Zoom and stuff on our on our website, artistpalettedurham.com. So if you like the yellow, add it in. If you like it, just one color or variations of the same color, you know, one darker than the other, one a little bit more white or something. Here. 
kind of like it with um yeah a little bit less yellow maybe just more of like an orange color Okay. Just trying to think if there's anything else I should add. The red with the dot of black. Okay, and just pop some of that back in. Just add some more shadow down here. There we go. Then you can sign your painting whenever you feel like you're done. Let us know how it went. Don't be afraid to show off what you've created. Hopefully this was pretty easy, not too, not too hard. I'm just like getting rid of some orange down here that was overlapping a bit too much. I didn't need, yeah, didn't need all of that orange touching. Just wanted to keep it more open. That's all. So that was just super light blue, like a little eraser. Oh yeah, this is going to stay online forever. I mean, you know, as long as we can help it, right? So it will stay online for as long as we possibly can keep it online which is forever. This was fun. This was, this was good. So happy painting. Check us out on our Facebook page. Show your results there. Ours Tile at Durham region on Facebook. And you can see lots more events that we're doing. And you can see on our YouTube a lot that we've already taught. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining me. Bye.